movie. How many times you've watched this movie? Joanne, this is the best movie on a dragon. I love watching it again and again. Hmm, I kind of like that. How to train your dragon movie. So you like dragons too? Yeah, kind of. But Joanne, do they really exhale fire? I have seen pictures of fire coming from dragon's mouth. Of course, in the pictures and movies, the dragons are shown with spitting fire, like the dragon Saint George killed. Saint George? Wow! Uncle Francis had promised us to tell the story of Saint George today. And here he is. Good morning, children. Good morning, Uncle Francis. Wow, is this a dragon movie? Yes, Uncle Francis. Uncle, are you going to tell us the story of Saint George today? Yes, Jim. I shall tell the story of Saint George today. You must have seen his pictures. He's always shown as a soldier riding on a horse and killing a dragon. Uncle, please tell us the story. George was born in a noble Christian family in Lydda, Syria, in AD 280. At the age of 14, George lost his father. And then, after a few years, he lost his mother as well. One day, he went to meet the Emperor of Nicomedia. Your Majesty, I have come to ask a favor from you. Huh? Favor? What favor you need, young man? Your Majesty, my father died two years ago and now I have lost my mother too. I'm sorry to hear about your parents. What can I do for you? My father was serving as a soldier in your army. In my army? Tell me, what was his name? His name was Gerontius. What? Gerontius? Are you Gerontius' son? Yes, my lord. How can I forget Gerontius? He was one of my finest soldiers. Your Majesty, I... I wish to join your army. Why not? Your father was a very honest and brave soldier. I will let you join the army to honor your father. Thank you, my lord. The next day, George joined the army of the Emperor Diocletian. George was very hardworking, and by the time he reached his late twenties, he had become the imperial guard of the emperor. In the meantime, a dragon was creating a lot of trouble in the nearby city of Selene. Hey, did you hear about the dragon by the side of the spring? Yes, I heard about it. It has started living near the spring, which is our only source for water. No one is able to draw water from the spring nowadays. I know. People are dying of thirst and hunger. Hmm. I've heard that creature is very ferocious. People are now offering sheep every day to calm this creature. Hmm. But doesn't it feed on humans too? Yes. Once the livestock is exhausted, it might turn to human beings. Hey, Hannah, what happened? Why are you crying? They... they took my daughter. Oh no! Who? Tell us what happened. They Who? took my daughter to feed the dragon. Oh! Who? Miriam? Why did they take her to the dragon? It seems that the dragon is fed up of eating the sheep. Now, they have started feeding the virgins of our town to feed this monster. But, Hannah, who decided to take Miriam to the dragon? It's, it's the town chief. He is drawing lots to decide who should be sent to the dragon. This is ridiculous. On one hand, the dragon is blocking our drinking water. On the other hand, it is feeding on our people. Only God can save us from this menace. I'm sure. God is punishing the emperor for all his wrongdoing. One day, the lot fell for the daughter of the town chief, and he was very upset. No, you are the town chief. Please don't let them take our daughter away. Please don't be upset. I will give them money and send some other virgin in her place. Thank you, dear. Cheer up, dear. We will not let them send our daughter to the dragon. But master... How is it possible? The lot was taken in the town council and the entire town know about it. That is true, master. 
The people will not allow us to take lots anymore and then the dragon will create a havoc. The town councillors managed to convince the town chief, and he had to send his daughter unwillingly to the nesting place of the dragon. Save me from this dragon! Then suddenly, George, who was doing his routine rounds, reached there and saw what was happening. Huh? What is happening here? Why are you all crying? Oh, George, it's you. What happened, Chief? Why is everyone gathered here? George, today it is the turn of my daughter. She... She's going to be offered to the dragon. What? Your daughter is offered as food to this monster? I can't believe this. We have no other options. We were feeding his sheep earlier. And he's feeding on the virgins of this town. No, this should not happen. We should put an end to this. But nobody has the courage to fight with the dragon. It is proving fire. And it's spreading deadly diseases. Oh, is it so? Let me give it a try. George... You have to be careful. This dragon is very, very deadly. By the sign of the Holy Cross and my faith in Jesus Christ, I will have the protection to fight this demon. When the dragon saw what George was doing, the dragon turned his attention onto George. Ha! The dragon lashed its tail at George, but George evaded the blow. Then the dragon blew fire, but George raised his shield. You cannot stand against the power of the Almighty. He has made this universe and all that is present in it, the good and the bad. Then George took his spear and pierced the throat of the dragon. And the dragon was dead. <laughs> the whole town couldn't believe this. Huh? Look at that! George has killed the dragon! Wow! He has freed the city from that evil demon. We are safe now! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, George, for your brave act. The city of Selene will be always be indebted to you. Thank the Almighty God. It is He who gives the strength to overcome the power of the evil. The people of Selene rejoiced that day and thanked George for saving them from the dragon. A few years later, Diocletian issued an order to arrest all the Christian soldiers of the army and sacrifice them to Roman gods. Look, are you a Christian? No, sir. I am a Jew. Why do you ask? Emperor Diocletian has given the edict to arrest all the Christians and punish them for not worshipping Roman gods. I know. He has already destroyed the Christian church in Nicomedia. He has asked all the Christians to burn their scriptures. If they don't, all of them will be burned alive. What? Psst. Be silent. The Emperor is coming. Commander, today is the 23rd of February, the Feast of Terminus. 
the Roman god of boundaries. Yes, my lord. Anything special this year, my lord? Of course. <laughs> I have taken a walk to remove Christianity within Roman Empire. Huh? Your Majesty? You want to send all the Christians outside your empire? Of course, George. It's simple. If they don't worship Roman gods, then they cannot live in this empire. But that will not be fair. I... I'm myself a Christian. What? You are a Christian? Yes, I am, Your Majesty. George, you know I like you so much. You need to denounce your faith and worship the Roman gods. Thank you for the special consideration, my lord. But I believe in the one true God and I cannot worship any others. George, listen to me carefully. Your father, Gerontius, was very close to me. He was a very loyal soldier and I like you too a lot. This is the reason I'm showing you special consideration. Please listen to what I'm saying. I'm sorry, my lord. I will not change my faith even if I'm thrown out of this empire. This conversation in front of other soldiers and officials of the army made the emperor upset. The emperor really liked George, so he thought of giving one last try. George, this is going to be my last offer to you. I can offer you sovereigns of gold and a higher rank in the imperial army if you decide to leave your faith. What do you say? I'm sorry again, my lord, but no offer in this world can change my faith in Jesus. Huh? Bind him and take him out of the city gates. Behead him in front of the people. Let it be a warning to all the Christians in my empire. Yes, your majesty. George's faith in Jesus was so strong that no offer could tempt him. George was taken to the city gates as the emperor commanded. Even though he knew that his life was soon going to end, he faced his death bravely. Hail our God, Terminus! And on that day, George was beheaded as per the orders of Emperor Diocletian. So you see, even during his death, he stood firm on his faith and never got tempted. Whoa! On what day did he die, Uncle Francis? He was executed on the 23rd of April, 303. His body was then taken to Lydda for burial. But aren't we celebrating the feast of St. George in April? Yes, Joan. In the Roman Catholic calendar, the feast of St. George is on the 6th of May. The story of St. George was really a story of courage and faith. He was killed at such a young age. Yes, Jim. And did you know that St. George is the patron saint of soldiers and the patron saint of England? Wow! Thank you, Uncle Francis, for narrating such an inspiring story. Okay, children, it's time for me to go. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, Uncle Francis. <laughs>